Hey, what's up guys? This is Keith and you're watching Barber's Auto Help. And no, this is not an automobile. This is a, uh, a dryer slash washer combination here. And uh, just figured I'd make a miscellaneous video showing uh, how I repaired this thing or how I'm going to repair this thing. Basically what was going on is the uh, water wouldn't drain out. And apparently this is a pretty common problem and I, I've already got it diagnosed, but I'm going to take you through the steps to diagnose this thing. Now, keep in mind I'm not uh, an appliance repair man. I'm an automobile technician, so I'm not an expert on this, but I think what I have to offer can help you in the process of diagnosing your own washing machine. Okay, first things first, safety first, disconnect the power from the washing machine. You can get electrocuted. Also, go ahead and turn off your, uh, your water going to the washing machine. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to take the two screws out from the bottom of the cover of the washing machine right here and remove the front cover. And I've already got the other one out. On this one, this front cover slides down. It slides down if you didn't hear that. And then it pulls right out. All right, and this is our suspect part. This is the uh, drain pump for the washing machine. And on this washing machine, it sits just off to the side in the front, uh, kind of up underneath the drum here. And we're going to go ahead and remove this. Now I've already got these hose clamps loose here. They were sitting up here on the uh, on the actual outlets or in inlets and outlets. Um, I got to push back a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and slide those hoses right off. Now, just bear in mind, on yours, you probably still got water up in your drum. So if you can clamp this line off somehow until you get this popped off and get this in a bucket. Um, you want to go ahead and do that that way water doesn't go everywhere otherwise water's going to go all over your floor so be prepared for that also same thing for this one too you might have a little bit of water still in this hose here so uh you can try to you well you actually can't clamp it off on this one because this one's hard just uh, have you a bucket ready to catch that water and it's got two two bolts that hold it on one in the front here and uh one on the back side and put and pull this bolt out set it off the side and uh, just loosen that one back there in the back which is right there and I've already got it loose just slide it out this way it comes right out um, and then we're gonna disconnect our electrical connector and this one has a little tang that you push down and pull right out so yeah, there's the pump, uh, here's your inlet, and here's your outlet right here. It's got a little flap that keeps the water from coming back in. And uh, typically, from what I understand happens on these things is uh, this inlet gets clogged up, it gets a whole bunch of junk and, and whatnot in it, and uh, it inhibits this impeller from turning. And uh, if you take a screwdriver or a pin or something and you stick it in there, you want to make sure that that uh, impeller spins freely. Now about two times per circulation you're going to feel a little bit of resistance and that's actually normal that's due to the uh, uh, magnetic motor on the back side here so it's, you're going to feel that little bit of resistance as it passes that particular part of the magnet so that's normal but yeah that usually is clogged up uh, or the uh, the motor windings become open in the back let's see here I got my volt ohm meter right here, a little fluke meter. And I'm just going to touch both of these terminals here with my leads. So I can do it with one hand and show you at the same time. There we go. And it's showing 14.6 ohms, which is what it's supposed to be. Actually, the new pump is the same thing. So uh, I'd say anywhere between the 15 to 15 to 16 or 13 to uh, 17 range you should be okay uh, for this pump anyway uh, this is the pump that I have here it's a, a DBO2 I don't know if that's a part number that's specific to this particular washer or not so being as that's what it was supposed to be 14.5 ohms and uh, there wasn't anything clogged up in the pump and the pump impeller was spinning freely um, I wondered was I getting adequate voltage to the connector so I went ahead and uh, probed my connector there with my, my volt ohm meter there and I put it on uh, 
AC voltage. This is not DC. I'm, I'm an automobile technician, so <laughs> I always put everything on DC because most everything on automobiles is DC. Uh, so what you got to do, once you get it connected, go ahead and, and reconnect power to the washing machine. Uh, plug it back up and don't touch any of this junk while you're doing that because uh, you don't want to get electrocuted. I, I do have some exposed metal right here with this, these particular leads that I have. So I'm going to go ahead and reconnect the power and then we'll test for adequate voltage. Alright, so we got power hooked up to it. Now we need to shut the lid on this so that it actually does what it needs to do. And we're going to go ahead and put it on uh, rinse, spin, and pull out. And we got the water turned off so no water is going to come out. Go ahead and turn that on. And we got 120 volts, which is supposed to be 120 volts. Uh, so why in the world is it not working? Let's go further. Disconnect the power. All right, now I'm gonna reconnect the pump electrically to the washing machine. And then we're gonna turn the power back on and then we're gonna hit that rinse cycle one more time and we're gonna see if this thing actually turns on and starts pumping. Yeah, I got power hooked back up to it and I'm gonna turn it back on. All right. And it looks like my pump is working. It's kind of rattling a little bit. Alright, so what I did, and, and I ran into this when I was actually diagnosing before I made this video, or and making this video, um, I reconnected it to the hoses there, and I went ahead and turned the water back on, and I had the pump hooked back up and everything, and I back probed this electrical connector right here, and uh, what I was doing is a loaded voltage drop test. Now, whenever I applied uh, water to it and uh, power to the pump, it actually pumped for about two seconds and then it quit and after it quit it was it was still turned on but it wasn't pumping anymore and it was still dropping 120 volts over those connectors there now these leads right here are not the correct leads to do this with these are automotive leads I'm, like i said I'm a, I'm a technician an automobile technician i'm not a uh, an appliance repairman but you don't want to use these type because you could get shocked. There's exposed metal right there. I, I deal with 12 volts at the shop. This is 120 volts. It can zap you. But uh, for grins and giggles, I'm going to have, go ahead and hook power back up to it. And I'm going to go ahead and do a loaded, loaded voltage drop test on it while it's running. And we're going to see if it's uh, dropping the full 120. And if it's dropping the full 120 and it's not working, well, then that's a bad pump. And let's see what we got. It's actually working, but it sure is noisy, and it's uh, dropping 120. We're going to go ahead and replace it. Now, my theory is, whenever this thing had uh, water going through it, it was actually getting loaded up, and uh, with power going to it, it was probably overheating those coils, and either short-circuiting the coils, or causing the coils to open, and that's why it would quit working. Okay, now we got the... Uh, we got the power cord pulled and uh, things shut off and everything so there's no chance of us getting electrocuted. We're going to go ahead and put the new pump in and you got your two bolt holes here. Put your pump right over those bolt holes or screw holes, whatever you want to call them. And put your screws in. That's good stuff. Go ahead and hook up your hoses to it. Get your hose clamps back on. Look 
it back up electrically. Hook the power back up. Turn the water back on. And let's take it for a spin. Alright, we got the water going in. Not a bad idea to check for leaks down here, make sure you're not leaking. All right, let's go ahead and speed this thing up. Let's shut this down. Let's go on over to spin. Check down here, make sure you're not leaking. It sounds like we're pumping. Let's go outside and make sure it's shooting out. Yep, we're working. Looks like we fixed it, guys. So I know we already got this thing figured out and it's working. Um, we got our problem fixed, but I'm going to go ahead and, and take this thing apart for you. For me, anyway, whenever I take things apart, it helps me to understand how they work. And it actually helps me to, to di diagnose things. So let me go ahead and get this apart for you. So I'll show off here first. Right off. screws up back here. This is what we got right here is our manifold, if you will. Uh, that's your inlet and your outlet, and that's pretty simple. That's all that is, and it's got a little flap here to keep water from coming back in. That little flap opens up outward. that and then you got your uh, pump assembly here that's your impeller and uh, like I was saying earlier it, it will have a little bit of resistance turning there but uh, I don't know what that noise was I think the noise is inside here I'm gonna go ahead and take this cover off too the cover for the uh, coil these are all our wires and everything and our two uh, terminals where electricity goes into it and this thing slides out the back here and this is your electromagnet and that's what actually gets your your impeller to spin and that part is actually magnetized this part isn't Whenever current flows through that coil there, this then becomes magnetized. And uh, what goes on is, if you ever taken a, a magnet and held the two north poles together, it, it likes to repel each other. So um, you get alternating, uh, alternating uh, polarities on your field coil here, and that will cause the uh, inside to start spinning. So that's how that works there. And there's actually some water in there. Uh, I think that might be normal. I don't know, but uh, I, I guess the water would be getting through that little seal right there, and uh, I don't know. Maybe that's what's wrong with it. It got water in there, but uh, anyway, it, it's like it's got a little seal right here, and then also that, uh, being as there's a, a, a plastic sleeve on this that keeps the electrical coil from uh, becoming saturated and you know electrocuting you. <laughs> so that's that's it in a nutshell. And uh, what what'll happen on these is. This, this coil will open up and uh, you won't allow it, it won't allow any current to flow through and it won't create any kind of a magnet or they will short and it won't create any kind of a magnet and I think what was going on in mine is this was heating up and it was either opening or or shorting out and that's why it would quit or there's actually something in here you heard that rattle there may be something inside there that may have been locking it up don't know don't care it's fixed so thanks a lot for watching guys i uh, appreciate it please check out my channel for more automotive uh, videos automotive repair videos that's actually what i uh, know how to do and if you have any questions about this uh, particular job here you're feel free to comment in the uh, discussion below there 
not that I'll have an answer for you, but uh, th this is an open forum, and uh, people comment all the time on uh, what's right and what's wrong. And uh, if, if there's any uh, bad information that may have been given in this video, I'm sure somebody will correct me, and I welcome that. Thank you guys for watching. Please be sure to subscribe, like, all that good stuff.